Excellent. So Sylvia is a research program manager at the Protocol Labs, and I was amused to see in her uh, biography, likes to believe she's a rising star golfer, as do we all. Uh, Sylvia's going to talk to us about research road mapping, uh, permissionless discourse for improved foresight coordination. Sylvia. Oh. Okay. Hi, everyone. Delighted to be here to talk to you about research road mapping. And it's fun to talk about the, impo the importance of network and collective knowledge after this talk. So, Research Field Mapping is a special project within Network Goods at Protocol Labs. Network Goods is a team focused on identifying, fostering, and rewarding the creation of public goods. Is this moving? Okay. And how can we accelerate and optimize the creation of scientific public goods? And we claim research roadmaps are valuable coordination models to optimize the creation of those goods. The, uh, they are dynamic and shareable instruments through which an inclusive set of stakeholders coordinate and align on the most impactful research paths, match problems and capabilities, and embed incentives to maximize positive impact. And uh, this is precisely the hypothesis we want to test. And to do so, we want to create a portfolio of actionable roadmaps, the ones we use to make informed decisions, and a reusable infrastructure for research road mapping that enables decentralized peer-to-peer -peer incentives alignment between stakeholders. Hopefully, in doing so, we'll gather enough evidence to support our claims and establish research road maps as revolutionary scientific coordination systems. But let's look at what research road mapping actually is. So research road mapping is both a knowledge sharing activity and a tool for scientific coordination problems. The road mapping process requires research stakeholders to engage in a conversation where they share latent knowledge and identify leverage points in a research network. Openly and transparently, sharing assumptions and tacit knowledge to quantify cost, impact, and uncertainty of alternative paths and aligning on the creation of the incentives, requests for experiments, or investment thesis. A strategic planning and vision alignment exercise that results in a map. And that map is a goal-centered graph representation of the alternative path enriched with quantitative data to support decisions. A shared network of research goals, milestones and dependencies to bootstrap research collaborations and foster alignment between researchers and research funders, hopefully filling the, the gaps in research, fostering scientific discoverability and pushing the scientific frontier forward. And although it's easy to recognize the value of road mapping for coordination, there's much to be done to drive their adoption among researchers, R&D labs, or industry labs, and revive the openness mindset of science. We need to make it easier to create, share, navigate, and update roadmaps. Guarantee value attribution to those that contribute to the map or use the map for decisions and incentivize high impact research paths both prospectively and retrospectively. So let's start with the knowledge sharing part. Road mapping research requires knowledge exchange models, a data model, a common language to translate and combine knowledge from different fields, experts, and views into an iterative and parsable graph that makes research paths ascertainable. Multidisciplinary and interoperable data models uh, that track knowledge acro across the sciences, enabling evidence-based decisions and scoping of research initiatives. And those models should be expandable, queryable, and personalizable to facilitate semantic merging of knowledge graphs enabling different levels of precision and granularity 
without compromising the mergeability of graphs or the use of AI-assisted tools, either to synthesize knowledge or to make predictions. Besides, establishing priorities of ideas and aligning research needs require a substrate where this conversation can happen. Coordination protocols and instruments that allow crowdsourcing of ideas, gap analysis and prediction of research costs, risks and impact to uh, and, and, and as well as the prediction of risks and impact, so we can scope down anti-risk research initiatives. However, the adoption of research roadmap is hindered by a subpar user experience. In terms of tooling, we are missing good graph navigation tools, the capability of querying graphs or link notes or whatever is a graph in the case. How do we represent a roadmap to start with? And we are missing collaborative features that make decision uh, the Sorry, we are missing collaborative features for decision making. And in, in all these challenges, we are limiting the production of collective maps that would boost science discoverability. And speaking about, uh, and speaking about collective roadmaps, we need research infrastructure that, to make it easy to create, collaborate and share knowledge. In, in fact, what we are missing is a playbook on how to roadmap a specific area of knowledge. How do I get started? What are the, the toolings that I can use? What kind of models should I use? And after I'm done with it, after I made my decision or after I wrote my grant proposal, what do I do with the map? Do I just write another PDF and publish it as a vision paper so that any other person needs to go to the process of breaking it down in, in parts again, creating a graph, putting it together, making decisions, write another PDF? How can we break this cycle? How can we make these uh, instruments uh, citable? We, need, we also need to add incentives in a way that researchers, researcher funders, politicians, or any other research stakeholders feels comfortable sharing their ideas in the open without the fear of being scoped. We need to track those contributions in a way that you can make value, we can establish value attribution, either if they create impact or if others build on top of the knowledge they created. And for instance, in, uh, as I mentioned before, Network Goods is a team that works a lot on these revolutionary coordination models. And we have innovative mechanisms to fund, to fund public goods, including research uh, public goods, such as iPursers, that I will link to get, uh, at the end of the, of the presentation. And these incentives are not necessarily just financial incentives. They also need to, to account for the metrics that you value in research, like reputation. Well, is, is it collaborating to a research world mapping or making a research world mapping public something that you value on the metrics uh, that we use, uh, uh, on the metrics that you use to evaluate our own researchers? Or is the research risking their reputation by contributing to these instruments? And if until this far this seems quite intuitive or useful, as I sure hope so, I claim it's because I'm using a set of knowledge exchanges models uh, that's, that were developing uh, with our extended network of collaborators and partners. So on my right, we have discourse graphs. This is a schema that maps scientific arguments into their constituent parts. So we have the research question that we are trying to solve, all the claims that we made that would provide a solution to that question, and then we come up with hypotheses, we, we generate results, hopefully in gathering evidence that will either support or uh, oppose the, the claims we, we did. On the left, and pardon for looking because I'm terrible mixing up right and left, uh, we have what I call a research world mapping schema. So when you are mapping a new area of knowledge, usually there's a goal or a question that you want to, to answer. And in order to answer that question, there are a certain uh, set of desired data properties or user needs that we need to account for so we can actually uh, 
accomplish that goal. And usually those properties are enabled by core technologies or approaches, and they can be limited somehow. So there are a set of new capabilities in green that we need to add to those core technologies, again, that will enable this either data and will answer the, our research question. And finally, here we have in blue the open problems that are all the questions that are problems that haven't been addressed yet and that they are somehow blocking uh, the, the progress here. So without going into too much detail, and because roadmaps are all about collaboration, our impact is perceived through our network of uh, uh, impact that includes cross-institutional and multidisciplinary scholars, tool builders, or practitioners, either developing those protocols, developing the support infrastructure, or stress testing this in practice to, to plan for research initiatives or uh, the risk science. So if you have suggestions, a topic to run experiment with, or you want to somehow support the development of the space, please do reach out to us. Or if you want to know more about the initiative and innovative work we do at Network Codes, there are some links here. And this is a QR code that lets you download the presentation so you can have all the, all the links and emails. Thank you for your attention. Great. Thank you, Sylvia, very much. Sorry, we're a bit tight for time. Um, we've got a minute and a half for questions, if anyone would like to come forward. We've got one colleague there. Yes, far away. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Alexander with um, RTI, the Research Triangle Institute. Um, so I'm trying to operationalize what you're talking about because I'm sympathetic to your ontology. But road mapping, I'm coming at this from the industrial technology road mapping kind of background, usually have some consensus around the end goal. For example, as semiconductors, it was you know, staying on Moore's law. Uh, I think one issue we run into with science is that, especially in a multidisciplinary environment, one, we use different terminology for the same questions, and two, we have a lot of disagreement about it's a somewhat adversarial you know, kind of process of, well, which way to, to go is, is really based a lot on some theory that may not have a common body of like shared understanding or shared agreement. So how does road mapping overcome that kind of adversarial um, you know, disagreement and actually get consensus on a, on a path forward? That's actually a great question because one of the things that we've been claiming as well is that we need some kind of government system or voting system to attach to these kind of mechanisms. So how do we actually shape collective roadmaps? You have your own roadmap, it's your vision of the space, I have mine. What, how can I merge them? And of course, we, ne we need a common language, but we need to disambiguate if we are using the same term for different things. So this is one of the open problems that we've been facing. How do we merge them the semantically? And uh, fortunately, there, there's a lot of uh, AI assisted tools that already happen uh, help in the system. But until we come up with this portfolio of roadmaps that we can actually uh, study and operate on to make decisions, we won't know for sure. It's just something that we guess, we assume that it's hard to, to, to combine them because of the implicit knowledge. But a roadmap, I will also claim that a roadmap is not a good roadmap if you can't navigate it without a lot of implicit knowledge. So, Great. I don't know, we can discuss it further if you want afterwards. Thank Great. you. Great, thank you Sylvia again, and uh, thanks also for the links for people to follow up. Um, thanks, thanks again.